Fernando Enrique Cardoso, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be here. In a recent interview, you talked about a general lack of enthusiasm in Brazil. You said there's a sense of dejection in my country. Why is Brazil downbeat? I would say basically because there is a lack of trust on the political life in Brazil. Not in one specific uh, person or personality or the president, or, but the Congress, the, the, the way how the, uh, the political people uh, treat, you know, uh, national problems, and also because of corruption among the political leadership. You see? But look, look at the big picture. I said Brazil is lagging behind India yeah. and China. It's true, but still you have a growth rate between 3 and 4 percent. You have poverty reduction on a very impressive scale. I don't understand why, given that big economic picture, Brazil would be, as you put it, in a crisis of identity. I don't say a crisis of identity. It's a sense of uh, malaise, if I can say in French. You see, we are not uh, feeling well. I mean, this is middle class people, I must say. People who read the newspaper or, or you know, try to, to follow what's going on in Congress. Because the, the, the normal citizen in Brazil is uh, rather expressing what you said before. Because the, the economy is going up. It's true that it's not at, as high as other, in other uh, countries or, or even in Brazil in other time. But anyhow, 4% is not that bad. And it's also true that you are reducing uh, poverty. So in that sense, the normal citizen feels that the standing of, of their lives is improving. Yeah? But you see, the reason I, I said national identity as, yeah. as a way of characterizing your thoughts is because you have said that there's a lack of cohesion, cohesion about yes. Brazilian national life. You say yeah. we have no unifying idea or project. Family, religion, political parties, education, they are all fracturing in Brazil. Well, maybe it's a little bit exaggerated to say they're all fracturing. But the point is that, that in other moments in Brazilian history, we had the sense that the Brazil has a, uh, is making progress. Now we are making progresses. Well, but now we are not making more progress sense. than ever before, yeah. but you seem less happy yes. and less uh, sure about what Brazil is about. That, that's the point. It's because, uh, you know, we are, we are repeating again and again and again in the last uh, decades after the redemocratization that Brazil is lacking of education, lack of, of, of health. We have the uh, agrarian reform problem, uh, misery, poverty, every day, every day. So uh, Brazil has become convinced that the situation is a situation of despair. It's not true. We are making progress. It's a matter of... Yeah, to, to get a new consensus. It depends on the leadership, basically. Uh, I would say that I don't want to, to you know, to, 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 to make it a criticism to my president. Uh, on the contrary, I think that Lula has a symbolic uh, imp in, in importance in Brazil because he's uh, coming from the working class and now being president. This could be a very important and positive signal. So why not? I would say, I repeat, because of the lack of, of trust on the uh, in Brazil, they use the uh, label, it's not correct, but anyhow, political class. Those who have the, you know, the control of the political system are, are, are not trusted by the population. What I get from you, and we'll talk about Lula later, yeah. but what I get yeah. from you is a real sense of frustration that you had two terms in the presidential office and you were not able to change oh, no, the I, political culture. Uh, the politi you're right. In the, in the well, case why? Of, why in the did case you of fail? political culture, you are, you are right. I changed the country, I, I suppose. In, in, in well, I'm not sure that you... Do you really believe that? I mean, again, no, I'm no, sorry no, to quote so many of your own term, words. In terms of the economy, yes, no doubt. Yeah, but uh, let's go beyond of, the economy, because you said... And uh, there's a sense of frustration in what you said. My government, you said, made education universal. Yes. But for what? What they now why? teach in schools because is now, a disaster. No, no. Why? Well, that's what because, you said. Yes, I said. But, but why? Because in, our problem was to, to give access to the population, to the schools. Now it's a problem of quality. But this is different, you see? So we, we, we have to improve the quality of education, which is maybe m more difficult than just to give access. I'm not a pessimistic vis-a-vis -vis Brazil. Maybe in this interview has a, a pessimistic tone. That's not the, the, the way I feel. You were seen as a man who uh, was a technocrat, perhaps even seen as a neoliberal by some in economic terms. You certainly hastened the pace of privatization. And yeah. yet, for all of your structural economic reforms, you couldn't solve the problem of the two Brazils. That is, the middle class and the successful yeah. upper class in Brazil, who are a very tiny minority, and then the vast numbers, yeah. the millions and millions of Brazilians who live in poverty. And you couldn't 
for all of your reforms tackle that problem of poverty? You are wrong. Sorry. Because we, I, we start, I started, not me, even before, but anyhow, we start a, a program of transformations in Brazil, and the results are coming. I give you the last result. Last result was about the reduction of poverty. The poverty reduction was very impressive in, in Brazil. Uh, basically, from 1995 on up to today, the poverty line it was 40%, now it's about 28%. But, Mr. Cardoso, if, if I may interrupt, yeah. many Brazilians will say, actually, poverty reduction became much more successful and speeded up after you left office oh, and after Lula came into power, yeah. because Lula yeah. spent much more yeah, money but, but on why? social programs, but why? including this, the very well-known yeah. Bolsa Familia, but why? which has lifted but why? millions of people from abject poverty. No, the, 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 the first step was when we stabilized the economy. The poverty line comes down from 40% to 30%. This was the real plan. And then it comes down. That was, that was the, the yes, currency, was the stabilization yes, of the yes, currency, stabilization. really taking on inflation. Yes, yes. yes. Which, of course, many people uh, give the credit to Lula for. Well, but this is the people, not true. You know, the, the stabilization was in 1995. Before, before me, I was finance minister. So the inflation came down and, and remained in the, at that level. Because Lula put together, I, 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 I'm not against, I'm in favor. He put together different programs I had, and since he is now been a beneficiary of a better situation in economic terms, he's giving more money to these people. So this is increasing. I, I, I agree with you, but I started. So the change of the Brazilian you know, uh, situation started uh, with the stabilization program during the government of President Itamar Franco. All right, well, well whoever, whoever takes then, the credit. And all social programs start in my government and have been, they are better off now because it's, it's normal that. Are you now reflecting on what happened in your presidency and also under Lula? Are yeah. you now saying that actually I've learned there are limits to market economics as applied oh, yes. to a country like Brazil? You can take privatization and neoliberalism too far. Let me see. Uh, I never was a new liberal to start with. I'm in favor of the market economy, but I'm also in favor of a very active action by, the, by government, by the state. I decided not to privatize some enterprise. Meanwhile, I decided to privatize others. I give you an example, the telecommunication. What happened with telecommunication? We had 800,000 cellular phones. Now we have 120 million cellular phones, and everyone has access to that. If you, if you look at the mining company, what I did with uh, state companies was to transform the state companies into corporations. And that's why now Petrobras, the oil company, is a very important one. Banco do Brasil is performing very well. So that's not enough to conform a nation. We need much more than that. I never was a, a new liberal, you see. Let me bring you back then yeah. to one of your opening points, which was that despite the progress you, you now talk about, Brazil still has a fundamental problem with corruption in its yeah, political and civic culture. Yeah, that's true. That's why I said that the, 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 the sense that you are not so well is because of the sense that middle class has, because the middle class has access to information, that corruption is there. And you have said, if I may put it to you, you've said that Lula, President Lula, has been too lenient on corruption inside his own party. And of course, we see 40 officials of his party are now facing trial on charges of, of buying votes. Yeah. Uh, going back a couple of years. Do you think Lula is personally responsible for that? I would say personal responsible because he's too, too strong. I, think, uh, I would say uh, Lula could be more uh, affirmative in saying this is wrong. Even very recently, referring to one of them, the, the former minister has been uh, convicted, not convicted, but indicted by the, the fiscal of the, of, of the Republic. Lula said very recently, just now, well, I don't believe. Uh, that he is in, he re, was really involved. So you, you, you think the president should give a clear lead on the issue of corruption? Oh, I think so. Well, in that case, did you give a clear lead? You had two terms in office. What kind of lead did you give your country? Well, you don't have any one case of a person in my government, uh, in dictator or something like that, uh, being... Uh, 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 software guarded by, by me. Well, that, that brings me to the essence of my case, if I may say so, because as I understand it, you appointed a, a federal prosecutor general, Geraldo Brindero, yes. who sat in office for years 
and received, according to the Brazilian press, over 600 inquiries, I think they're called, into criminal behavior by public officials. Now, the vast majority of those inquiries were simply filed away. I think he even developed a nickname in Brazil as the, the sort of the filing clerk. Yeah. Now, well, I, is that is that because you're telling me there was no wrongdoing at all no, 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 in I, power when you were president, or that, is it simply because he sat? He sat on those allegations. Let me uh, put very clear to you that in Brazil, the, the fiscal is absolutely independent from the executive branch. Absolutely independent. But you appointed and, and, him. Yes, but he's independent. He judged by himself. And at that time, several persecutors were highly motivated by political parties. And they tried to, to accuse it here and there. I never intervened. Never. I, I, I stress. But, in but, any but, one of these cases. But I guess what I'm getting to is this. You say, and you've, you've said it again on this program, Lula has to give a lead. Lula has to be strong. Yes. But Are you telling me there were no charges brought have, against any MPs or any, but, any members of your government over an eight-year no, no, period? No, no. Are you telling me that politics was entirely clean? Could you give me the name of one? No, I'm just asking, do you think no, politics was entirely no one clean? Has been, no one has been... Uh, con but the uh, fact nobody was charged perhaps suggests indeed, that or even, wasn't or really even, or no, not Or even uh, accused by the press, no one minister, no one. And if one has been, or would be, my reaction would be immediately, get out. So that's what I'm, I'm saying to you. All right, let, let's change it from, from the personal to the, to the bigger picture. You clearly believe you failed to change the political culture of the country when you were in power, because you've already <laughs> said that. So, you, so yeah. hang on, but, but now that you reflect on it, and now that you see what Lula is going through, how does a leader in Brazil in the future really change this political culture that you say is such a problem? You know, uh, I'm also a sociologist. Uh, you refer to a leader to change a political... Uh, well, it takes leadership. A, a political uh, culture. Uh, it, the leader can give an example, uh, can force, but this is a much more ample process than just for one man. I'm not blaming Lula because of that. I'm blaming him in a specific case, not to say no, because he, he, he can give a, uh, offer an example to the nation. To change the political process is a long story. Uh, we, 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 it is necessary to, to change some, some, some rules, some uh, legal, uh, you know, implications, as well as some, some, some uh, the culture. What I did, I tried not to allow the party system to intervene too much in the administration and to, to give more professionalism to the administration. Final question for you. From the beginning of this interview, you've given me the impression of a man who ultimately was frustrated that you couldn't do, no, more, do more to change Brazil. Oh, in that sense, but yes. But do you think Brazil can be changed? In the way ah, yes. to be. My sense is that not me only. Brazil is, is, being, is changing across time. It's become an important country. When I was born, I was born in 1931, Brazil at the time, probably no, no less than 60% would not be able to read or to write. Now, uh, all, stu all young people are uh, attending schools. When I was uh, born, in Brazil, 80% of the population was uh, rural. So now it's a different country. I yes, so I'm, I'm very optimistic in that sense. And I think that's possible to, 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 to trust that Brazil has a good future. Provide, provide the Brazilian uh, 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 ruling class will be much more sensitive to, against corruption and more concerned with internal domestic uh, situation. Fernando Enrique Cardoso, thank you very much for being on Hard Tool. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much.